And good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday. It's July the 15th. I'm Frank Malik. Happy Wednesday. I'm Maria Medina. New details coming to light about a kidnapping in Vallejo. The case police originally called a hoax appears to have been a well-planned kidnapping. But as KPX 5's Andrea Borba tells us, if the victims are expecting an apology from city leaders, they'll have to wait. Vallejo city leaders said many words about the Denise Huskins and Aaron Quinn kidnapping case. Um, if we were to speak out now, um, short of uh, seeing the completion of the investigation, uh, um, we could be wrong again. At this time, we are not. We are going to hold off on that until we, the investigation is concluded, and then we'll evaluate it at that time. The city's official line is we're waiting until the FBI's case wraps up. Among the items the FBI collected after arresting 38-year-old Matthew Muller for the crime were three drones from this Vallejo storage facility. In the criminal complaint, the feds quoted a rambling email they say Muller sent to the San Francisco Chronicle. Muller allegedly said he and his co-conspirators used them to surveil the Mare Island neighborhood prior to abducting Denise. The feds also found video cameras wirelessly set up allegedly to let the suspects monitor Aaron inside his home to be sure he was following their instructions after Denise was thrown in a trunk. While most in Vallejo city ranks weren't breaking the thin blue line, Councilmember Bob Sampian, a 30-year vet of police work, offered up this to Denise and Aaron. Of course I would want to say I'm, I'm sorry that they've had to go through this. I know both the attorneys involved in this case and it's difficult for their clients as it would be for anybody that would be involved in this kind of uh, an incident. And as victims, I think that our city should have been a bit more sensitive in the way we dealt with them. A retired FBI agent says there may be another reason for the wall of silence from the city of Vallejo, and that may be an impending lawsuit or the possibility of a civil grand jury and the city's police department getting called in front of it to explain how they handled Denise and Aaron. In Vallejo, Andrea Borba, KPIX 5. Well, it turns out Denise Huskins may not have been the intended target. The affidavit says the kidnappers were after Aaron Quinn's ex fiance who moved out last year. The kidnappers apparently did not realize they had the wrong woman until after they had Huskins tied up. It is uh, 6.02. The Berkeley City Council has approved immediate changes to building regulations in response to that deadly balcony collapse. KPX 5's Christian Hartnett is live in Berkeley this morning to explain what will happen after last night's vote. Good morning, Christian. Uh, good morning, Frank and Maria. Tomorrow will mark one month since that tragic day and uh, right behind me still the memorial sits on the sidewalk uh, near the building where the balcony collapsed after a lot of discussion about how the city will respond to this a decision was made to tighten up building inspections the city council passed the new inspection laws unanim unanimously that means in the next six months all balconies and weather exposed elements on properties in berkeley will need to be inspected. All also included in the city council decision is the requirement of existing balconies to have proper ventilation to prevent dry rot. A follow-up inspection will happen every three years instead of the five years that was originally on the proposal. An attorney representing one of the students killed in the, in the collapse pleaded with the council to pass the new inspection laws right away. The reason why the inspection rule is so important is because if there is a new design or new materials being proposed, it will catch something early on. Other regulations will still need to be decided upon, such as the use of steel reinforcement and other materials used in all balconies and weather exposed elements constructed in Berkeley. And the city council estimates that these six month inspections or inspections that need to take place in the next six months affects about 6,000 properties in the city. Back to you. And Christian, someone's going to have to pay for those inspections. How is the city going to pony up that money? Uh, and that is the question that the city is trying to answer. At this point, they have said they don't have the resources. They don't have the money to get those inspections done. So moving forward, that will be uh, the question that they're going to need to address. Live in Berkeley, Christian Hartnett, KPIX 5. All right, let's go straight to Lee's on those BART delays and that fire. And the fire is now out. It was just a small fire burning on the BART tracks just outside of the Glen Park station. The fire is out. We do still have 20 minute BART delay system wide. And there is also a brush fire in San Jose causing problems. It has shut down the Story Road off ramp from southbound 101. So that is shut down and flames and smoke are currently visible from the roadway. You're going to see this along 101 near the 280. 
680 interchange. It is slowing down some traffic as drivers take a look. It's the non commute direction South 101 that has been shut down again. It's a story road exit from the freeway that has been closed. As we keep a close eye on the BART system, they've had a rough morning. It started off with switching problems in Fremont and then that small brush fire outside of the uh, Glen Park station. The bottom line is that trains are now running across the entire BART system. They are running late though. 20 minutes system wide. All other transit systems are doing okay this morning. And the Bay Bridge toll plaza, it's going to cost you some time now leaving the East Bay heading into San Francisco. To expect delays from the foot of the MacArthur Maze with the metering lights on. That's a look at your KCBS traffic now to Roberta. Official sign up at 6 o'clock. It is now 6.05. Good morning, everyone. And stop whatever you're doing. Just work with me here. Stop whatever you're doing and take a look at this. Ooh, it is sunrise over the Mount Vaca area. Wow, it is glorious. Clear skies. We do have some stratus hanging tight to the coast, but that's breaking up already. Temperatures are in the 50s and 60s. We've cooled to 53 degrees in Santa Rosa. That's the coolest temperature I've seen in two weeks. We're going to be warmer today. In fact, at the coast, 71 degrees in Pacifica. That is going to be pristine. 80 degrees in Redwood City. Mid 80s, so scattered through Saratoga. Jumping into the low 90s in the Gilroy area. East of the Bay, up to 95 degrees in Fairfield. 83 in Vallejo, Benicia, Martinez, and American Canyon. 60s, Stinson Beach. 70s, Sausalito. 80s, Nevada. The full forecast is coming up at 18 minutes after the hour. We'll okay? see you soon. Thanks, Roberta. Relatives of a young girl who died when she was hit by an Uber driver have settled a lot. Lawsuit. Six year old Sophia Liu was run over in a crosswalk in San Francisco on New Year's Eve in 2013. Uber had argued it was not liable for the girl's death, in part because the driver was not carrying a passenger. However, he did have the Uber app open. The girl's mother was also hurt. Terms of the settlement were not disclosed. And Conquer police say they've arrested a suspected cat burglar. Jason Lee Harris was arrested during a traffic stop yesterday evening in Antioch. Police say news outlets, uh, word of mouth, and social media all played a role in finding Mr. Harris. Investigators say he's linked to several burglaries this year. Two years after a man was shot and killed by an officer in Southern California, a judge has ordered Gardena police to release video of that incident. Now, the video was captured by cameras mounted in two patrol cars. It shows three men mistakenly suspected of stealing a bicycle standing in a street. Officers ordered the men to keep their hands up, but one of the suspects appeared confused, dropping his hands, raising his arms repeatedly, prompting officers to open fire. There are lots and lots of things that go into appropriately judging an incident like this. The videotape is only one aspect of many. And the city of Gardena has already settled a lawsuit over the shooting for $4.7 million. Today, President Obama will try to sell the nuclear agreement with Iran to Congress and the American public. And as CBS News' Hina Daniels reports, this could lead to a very feisty debate up on Capitol Hill. In an interview with the New York Times, President Obama is defending the historic nuclear deal with Iran. It's a case the president will continue to make to the nation today when he holds a news conference at the White House. We have cut off every pathway for Iran to develop a nuclear weapon. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle have already begun to pick apart this agreement, which also lifts a U.N. arms embargo against Iran over time. Those are problematic uh, because Iran is uh, the biggest supporter of terrorism in the world. Republican critics accuse the president of making too many concessions. This appears to fall well short of what the goal we all thought was trying to be achieved. Congress has two months to review the deal before voting on whether to lift U.S. sanctions against Iran. Hannah Daniels, CBS News, Washington. Well, new video takes us inside the tunnel a Mexican drug lord used to escape from a maximum security prison. Joaquin Guzman, known as El Chapo, broke out of his cell last Saturday. He escaped through a hole dug under his shower. Then he made his way through a mile-long tunnel on a rusty motorcycle or possibly on a cart pushed on steel rails 62 feet underground. He is now on the run. Mm. Tougher gun control laws could be coming to San Francisco. Supervisor Mark Farrell wants gun dealers to electronically transmit information about their sales. That includes the buyer's name, address, and date of birth. The dealer would submit this information weekly. That information would be held for up to five years. The reform aims to prevent people stealing from dealers and stop those who are 
aren't legally allowed to have guns. All right, if you're looking for a deal today, Amazon and Walmart are in a battle for shoppers looking for deals. Amazon is marking its 20th anniversary by offering one day sales exclusively to subscribers of its Prime service. Now, at the same time, Walmart is offering 2,000 deals online starting today. You've got the number one brick and mortar retailer in the world going after the number two online retailer in the world, and they are not playing around. Well, Amazon is offering a 30 day free membership in Prime, including free shipping. So Walmart is offering free shipping on purchases starting at $35 instead of 50 also for the next 30 days. Time now, 610. The deadly shooting on Pier 14 has presidential hopefuls talking about immigration, and the victim's family has a message for one of those candidates. And we'll take you to a Bay Area watch party as a NASA probe sends back the first images from Pluto. From the KPIX Weather Center, good morning, everyone. We have rain. It's back in the forecast. I'll tell you when you can expect it. And there are accidents now delaying traffic on both the Carquinas Bridge and the Benicia Bridge. BART delays continue as well. I'll have details with KCBS Traffic. Shot or is it the weather camera? Thirteen minutes after the hour, six o'clock. Good Wednesday morning, everyone. Yes, clouds will greet you along the coast and into the bay this morning. We've got clear skies inland. Today will pan out to be warmer than yesterday, but we've got rain back in the forecast. Details then less than five minutes away. Thank you, Roberta. Time may, <clears throat> excuse me, may be running short to reach a deal on San Jose's public safety pensions. Leaders of police and firefighters unions say they will walk away from talks by the end of today if there's no agreement. But the mayor, Sam Licardo, says the 
city is willing to keep negotiating. Two sides are at odds over retirement benefits for new employees. This after a judge said that under Measure B, the city can reduce pensions for its new hires. Donald Trump says the shooting death of Kate Steinle on Pier 14 two weeks ago demonstrated the need for tighter immigration policy. Now Steinle's brother has this to say. Donald Trump talks about Kate Steinle like he knows her. I've never heard a word from his campaign manager, never heard a word from him. Um, it's, it's disconcerning and, uh, you know, I don't want to be affiliated with somebody that can't have, doesn't have the common courtesy to reach out and ask about Kate and ask about our political views and what we want. I get this, a new Suffolk University USA Today survey had Trump leading the field of GOP contenders with 17%. Jeb Bush trails by three points. It is 616 now today. NASA hopes to get detailed images of Pluto from the New Horizons spacecraft. It's humanity's first close look at the icy planet. And Kristen Ayers went to a Bay Area party as NASA scientists made history with a spacecraft that's three billion miles away. This is the sound of success, a decade in the making, as cheers went up inside NASA's mission control. Hundreds of people at this party were cheering too. It's really monumental. It's just a moment in history. It's really exciting we got now all the way out to Pluto. It was cool. Just shy of the dwarf planet Pluto, the spacecraft New Horizon phoned home with essentially this message. Yeah, I'm still working and everything went cool. New Horizons already sent back this very cool image of Pluto. Scientists at Chabot explained the probe, which is the size of a baby grand piano, has been hurtling through space at about a million miles a day. In approximately seven miles a second. At that speed, you could cross the United States, I think, in about six minutes. Tonight, New Horizons sent no new images, but scientists were able to confirm something they didn't know before. Pluto is about 1,470 miles across, bigger than they thought. And McKeegan says more data uncovering Pluto's mysteries is coming. We're going to learn about the mass of Pluto, the atmosphere of Pluto, the surface composition and texture. In Oakland, Kristen Ayers, KPIX 5. Last night, the president chimed in. He tweeted, Pluto just had its first visitor. Thanks, NASA. It's a great day for discovery and American leadership. It takes four and a half hours for signals to travel one way between the spacecraft back here at Earth. New Horizons is programmed to go past Pluto and then begin studying its far side and then Beyond that, we'll see what's out there, I <laughs> yeah, guess, right? You know who had there? the money shot yesterday was somebody posted online. Um, I shotted them with Pluto at Disneyland. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was the money shot yesterday. <laughs> all over Facebook and all over Twitter. <laughs> yeah. How we doing? Yeah, it's busy. Oh, it's okay. been a very busy commute. Get busy. Unfortunately, now, if you are a Carquinez Bridge commuter, watch out for this accident westbound 80. It's in the commute direction just near the toll flats. Two lanes of traffic are shut down. Then adjacent to the Carquinez Bridge over at the Benicia Bridge, this one's in the non-commute direction. Have an accident at the toll plaza blocking at least one lane of traffic. Lots of hot spots this morning. Uh, the fire department in San Jose is dealing with this brush fire, which is visible from the freeway. They have shut down the Story Road exit from southbound 101 as they work on this fire. Again, with those flames and smoke visible from the roadway, it will cause a delay for both 101 and 280 heading through the area. Now, we did have problems affecting the BART system. They are looking at a 20-minute delay system-wide. All of this stemming from an earlier very small brush fire on the tracks outside of the Glen Park Station in San Francisco. All other transit systems are looking okay. No problems for the ferries, the ACE train, or the Altamont Commuter Express. But the Bay Bridge told Plaza, that's going to be a slow ride for you. The metering lights are on and it's clocking in at a 20 minute drive time between the Carquinez Bridge and the Maze. That drive time will certainly increase because of that accident that they're working to clear westbound at the Carquinez Bridge. Now, do keep in mind Isabel Avenue, Highway 84, is shut down now till at least noon today because of this morning's big rig accident. You're going to want to use Valacitos as your alternate. That's a look at KCBS traffic. Here's Roberta. Please, I know you have a great long.
long-term memory. Just excellent. Not so oh, sure about your yes. short-term memory. No, okay? yeah, I can't remember this so morning. So let me, <laughs> let me refresh you. 24 <laughs> hours ago, this camera view looking out towards SFO was just socked in with a layer of low clouds, fog, even some drizzle. But now we're seeing clearing at SFO, which leads me to believe we're going to have clearing at the coast earlier today, and therefore some warmer temperatures. Right now, we are in the 50s and in the 60s. There's no reports of any local airport delays. Right now, the winds are dialing back after a pretty gusty evening. 10 mile per hour winds across the bay in Oakland, 6 SFO, calm in Pleasanton. Upstream, we go to Fairfield at 11 mile per hour winds. So the winds will blow out of the west later today, 10 to 20 miles per hour. There's that marine layer, 2,000 feet deep in comparison to yesterday at this time. It was 3,000 feet deep. It is scouring out a lot sooner. It will be warmer today and tomorrow, the warmest days of the work week. Uh, drizzle, we started off with it this morning. I'm going to wipe it out of the forecast now. And we're watching the tropics for the weekend. We have a chance of rain showers on Sunday and on Monday. Right now, high pressure building in to the western states, but there. Hurricane Dolores, the remnants, one computer model suggests it's going to lift up in a northerly fashion and bring some tropical moisture into the Bay Area, definitely on the muggy side. Another computer model takes it out over the open water, so we will watch this situation and update you as we get that information. Mid-90s today at the state capitol, 103 to the north in Redding, 96 in Fresno, 72 Monterey Bay. Sunup was at 6 o'clock. We lost a minute and 11 seconds on our daylight today. 70s at the beaches, 80s peninsula, 90s inland areas. Again, a bit of a breeze late day. There you had that chance of rain showers on Saturday and Sunday. Make it a great hump day, Frank. All right, Roberta, thank you. 620, a teenager out of the hospital now this morning after surviving a plane crash in a remote wilderness of Washington. How reality TV may have saved her life. That story and much more when we come back.
Good morning, everybody. If the Giants make it to their second straight World Series, they're going to be the visiting team after last night's All-Star game in Cincinnati. Willie Mays honored as one of the four greatest living players. Pete Rose got a 1 minute 24 second standing ovation. And Mike Trout became the first player since Bo Jackson in 1989 to lead off the game with a home run. Madison Bumgarner came in the fourth inning, throwing to his catcher, Buster Posey. He got Jose Altuve to ground out to end the inning with two runners on. Top of the fifth, American League leading 2-1. to one. Kansas City's Lorenzo Kane doubles home Albert Pujols to make it 3-1. to one. Kane was 2-3 for three in the game. Brandon Crawford of the Giants, he did get a sack fly in the ninth to make it 6-3, to three, but that is the way the game ended. Trout becomes the first player to win back-to-back -back MVPs he got a Corvette last year. This and year, now, he goes the with the Chevy truck. He's got the whole game. And, you know, it's great to see these uh, young players. They're great faces for our game, great ambassadors. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's going to be standing there, I, I think, with uh, the guys we saw tonight. Yeah, high, high praise for Trout. Quiet night for the local nines in Cincinnati. Ace catcher Stephen Vogt, 0 for 1 in his first All-Star game. Oakland ace Sonny Gray was ineligible to pitch. National League starting catcher Buster Posey, 0 for 2, as was Joe Panic in his All-Star debut. One quick note on Sonny Gray. He did not pitch in the All-Star game, but he gets to pitch Friday night. He's already got 10 wins. I'm Dennis Adano. See you tonight. Thank you, Dennis. Play of the day. How about another look? We're going to take you back to the All-Star game because it was the only sporting event last night. And this is pretty cool. That's Zach Granke with the Dodgers. Granke's Mike Trout right is the batter. Pitch. Fourth pitch of the game. And see you later. Arguably the best pitcher of the game against one of the best hitters. And the hitter won that battle. He won the MVP. And the AL, of course, went on to win it 6-3. to three. The American League, by the way, has won 15 of the last 19 all-star games. Mr. Trout with your play of the day. All right, happy hump day. It is 626. The San Francisco Zoo has been searching for a venomous snake that went missing last week, but turns out there was nothing to worry about all along. I'm Christian Hartnett live in Berkeley. A month after the balcony collapse tragedy, the city is now vowing to make sure it doesn't happen again. We'll tell you how.
from the CBS Bay Area Studios. This is KPIX 5 News. Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday. It's July the 15th. Good to have you with us. I'm Frank Miller. Happy Wednesday, everyone. I'm Maria Medina. And the city of Berkeley now has stronger safety standards in the wake of that deadly balcony collapse last month. KPIX 5's Kristen Hartnett live in Berkeley on the immediate changes after last night's city council vote. Good morning. Good morning, Frank and Maria. Well, tomorrow will mark one month since six were killed, seven injured in that balcony collapse uh, back in June. And uh, up still behind me, you see the memorial that is sitting on the sidewalk. Well, after a lot of discussion about how the city will respond to the tragedy, a decision was made to tighten up building inspections. The city council passed the new inspection laws unanimously. That means in the next six months, all balconies and weather exposed elements on properties in Berkeley will need to be inspected. Also included in the city council decision is the requirement of existing balconies to have proper ventilation to prevent dry rot. A follow up in inspection will happen every three years instead of the five years that was originally on the proposal. An attorney representing one of the students killed in the collapse pleaded with the council to pass the new inspection laws right away. The idea that people would come up here and say that there should not be inspections with some frequency or that you should halt the emergency action, I think is unbelievable under the circumstances of this tragedy. Other regulations will still need to be decided upon, such as the use of steel reinforcement and other materials used in all balconies and weather exposed elements constructed in Berkeley. And the city council estimates about 6,000 properties will need to be inspected within the first six months. The problem, they don't have enough resources and money to cover it all. So at this point, the thing that the city still needs to decide is how they're going to pay for it all. Live in Berkeley, Christian Hartnett, KPIX 5. All right, thanks, Christian. Vallejo city leaders appear to be watching what they say as new details come out in a kidnapping case. The FBI says it collected three drones from a storage facility after arresting Matthew Muller. He and other suspects allegedly used them to watch a neighborhood prior to kidnapping Denise Huskins. The FBI also found wireless video cameras allegedly used to monitor her boyfriend. Well, so far, Vallejo officials are refusing to apologize for calling the kidnapping story a hoax. If we were to speak out now, um, short of uh, seeing the completion of the investigation, uh, um, we could be wrong again. At this time, we are not. We're going to hold off on that until we, the investigation is concluded, and then we'll evaluate it at that time. Well, Mueller was arrested after a similar crime in Dublin. He is expected to be indicted in the Vallejo case within the next two weeks. But it turns out Denise Huskins may not have been the intended target. The affidavit says the kidnappers were after Aaron Quinn's ex fiance who moved out last year. The kidnappers apparently did not realize they had the wrong woman until after they had Huskins tied up. And for the latest developments in this case, keep watching KPIX 5 News. Also, check out our website, cbssf.com. It is 6.33, a check of weather. You know, it's a good day to go golfing, and I think I know someone that's going to be doing that. <laughs> yes, it's going to be my second time participating in this particular tournament. It's at Hayward Area Recreation District's 30th Annual Charity Golf Tournament. So they've been doing this a long time. It's going to be 78 degrees, all funds raised, all proceeds go to Park and Recreation District programs, helping out the kids in their own backyard. What a day, 78 degrees there right now in San Jose, clear skies. Do you remember yesterday, 24 hours ago, shocked in at this hour? San Jose now 61 degrees, a southeast wind at 10 miles per hour, humidity is at 77%. We're going to have clearing all the way back to Pacifica today, low 70s there, mid 70s across the central bay to the 80s around the peninsula, topping off at 95 degrees in the warmest sector of our inland areas. I've got your weekend forecast, perhaps rain? That's coming up at 48 minutes after the hour. Lisa? Ooh, we might be using our windshield wipers. Okay, good morning, everybody. Long delays continue in the Livermore area. That's where we've got Isabel Avenue shut down in both directions. Highway 84 closed at Vineyard because of this big rig accident. And we are hearing from the CHP they expect to have the shutdown till at least 12 noon today as they work to clear up the wreckage and some damage to the roadway. Use Valacitos instead as your alternate. And the Story Road exit from southbound 101 is now open.
happened following this morning's small brush fire just off of the freeway. North 101 still slow. The commute direction, a typical backup now, extending beyond the 280-680 interchange to about Trimble. And better news for the BART system. They've been struggling with all kinds of problems this morning. BART officials tell us they are back on time. Full service restored to all BART lines, and they are on schedule. No delays this morning for the ferries, Caltrain, and it's been a great morning for the Altamont Commuter Express. Still no delays for the system. That's a look at KCBS traffic, guys. Thank you, Lisa. Today, state lawmakers will discuss stopping PG&E from writing off fines related to the San Bruno pipeline explosion. Senate bill would prevent the utility from taking tax deductions on that fine of $1.6 billion. The bill's backer says such deductions cost general fund more than 100 million bucks. The explosion killed eight people back in 2010. Federal investigators blamed it on a faulty weld. And shootings in Richmond killed a man and injured four others. And police are trying to figure out who is responsible. The first shooting happened just before five last night in front of the Monterey Pines apartment on Burke Avenue. Police found one man dead and a teenager critically injured there. And about an hour later, another shooting right down the street. Three people were hurt. Investigators aren't sure if the shootings are connected. We are now getting an inside look at how a Mexican drug lord broke out of a prison. CBS reporter Wendy Gillette shows us the mile long escape tunnel. One of Mexico's most notorious drug lords was serving his sentence in cell 20. Despite an extensive network of surveillance cameras, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was able to break out of his barren prison cell Saturday night. He escaped through a hole dug under his shower. He made his way through this well-constructed tunnel on a modified rusty motorcycle or in one of two carts pushed on steel rails, 62 feet underground. There was a pipe, wires and lights running along the top of the tunnel. El Chapo then climbed up this ladder, reaching freedom inside a small unfinished structure near the maximum security prison. He remains on the run despite a massive manhunt. Security experts say this was an intricately devised escape that likely took more than a year to plan and build, buying a piece of land, constructing the building in the middle of a field, and then digging the tunnel. They say it's obvious there was inside help, and three prison officials have been fired. Wendy Gillette for CBS News. Financially strapped Greece will need debt relief and the equivalent of 94 billion U.S. dollars through the year 2018. That's a word from the International Monetary Fund, which says the country's situation has deteriorated since it closed its banks on June the 29th. Yesterday, Greece and its creditors reached a bailout agreement that requires the country to enact painful budget cuts and economic reforms. Greece will still be able to use the euro currency. Search crews say they found wreckage in northern Washington state where a 16-year-old girl survived a small plane crash, but they have not been able to get close enough to positively identify the aircraft. Autumn Veach says her step-grandparents died in the crash last weekend. She suffered minor injuries, and she managed to escape out of the rugged terrain. Her father says she learned survival, survival skills from TV programs. She watches a lot of survival shows with me. Survivor man, she'd be very proud of her. Well, Autumn was released from a hospital in Brewster last night. Today, crews will try again to get to the wreckage. New this morning, a venomous snake that went missing from the San Francisco Zoo never actually went anywhere. On Friday, zookeepers noticed the 13-inch Barron's Racer snake was missing from the New South American Tropical Rainforest exhibit. Well, they thought a bird may have eaten it. Turns out it was just a little shy. It was hiding. The snake never actually left its enclosure. It is alive and well at the zoo. That's good news. Thirty-four <laughs> million dollars. That's how much an anonymous donor gave to help people in the Bay Area. At least 17 organizations in Oakland will benefit. East Oakland Youth and Development Center received one million in Asian Health Services. They got three million. Move over, Riley Curry. A new girl may take over the podium with your dad, Steph, next year. And she's brand new. Steph Curry's wife, Aisha, gave birth to the couple's second child over the weekend. Say hi and meet baby Ryan Carson. Steph posted the photo on his Instagram account with the hashtag ProudDaddy. Her arrival capped off quite a summer for the NBA champ and the league MVP. Who has it better than Steph Curry? Right. Nobody right now. All right, it is Wednesday and it is 6.39. Soon it could be much easier for wireless companies to put a cell tower near you. Details of the plan up for a vote in Sacramento today. 
And the number one real estate team in the country has been named. No, it's not from New York or L.A. It's right here in Palo Alto. I'm Kit Doe. Daily on Realty reveals their secrets and also how long they think these good times are going to last. Hey, David, how you doing? on listen to me i may have to go to a live shot let me see if i can get it unlocked i'll let you know within like 15 seconds if not then we go to a live shot it just locked up Six forty-two on this hump day. It is Wednesday. It is July fifteenth, and good morning, everyone. We are taking a live look at San Jose. Twenty-four hours ago, we were shocked in. This morning, we've got clear skies. It's a warmer day on tap, and I got details coming up in five minutes. Hey, Roberta, wholesale inflation went up a bit in June, with an especially large jump in egg prices. Here now, KCBS Radio's financial reporter Jason Brooks. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Frank. Prices are on the rise—a trend we've been seeing for the past several months, although still inflation not too huge of a move with the Labor Department's producer price index up four-tenths of a percent in June. Egg prices, though, posted a record increase, according to government records. They were nearly doubled in June due to the avian flu outbreak in the Midwest. Gas prices were also on the rise, but still down 30 percent compared to a year earlier. Fed Chair Janet Yellen addressed members of Congress in her mid-year out economic outlook and said she is seeing improvement in the economy after that brutal first quarter and says we're still on pace for a rate hike later this year, but says we need to emphasize the pace of rate hikes afterwards that rates will likely remain low for some time to come. Stock market working on a four session winning streak, but under a little bit of a challenge this morning so far. Let's look at the big board and see how we're doing at this point. Dow lower by 17 points. NASDAQ still holding on. It's up by nine and the S&P is flat. Maria and Frank, back to you.
Jason Brooks on a Wednesday. Thank you, Jason. And now time for a look at what's coming up later on CBS This Morning. And Gail King joins us. She's in the big chair this morning to give us a little preview. Good morning, Gail. How did you know Frank is the big chair? How did well, you know that? I just call it that. Charlie likes it. <laughs> yes, you're right. I, it is the big chair. Maria, good to see you. Good to see you. I had an uphill battle on Capitol Hill as the White House tries to sell Congress on the Iran deal. Nancy Cordes is there with the reaction. Plus, we're following a story about a divorced San Francisco couple. I'll bet you guys are following this, too. Legal analyst Ricky Kleeman on why their fight over frozen embryos may set a new legal standard. And mixed martial arts champ, her name is Ronda Rousey. She's telling Bill Tra Ben Tracy is his name, not, not Bill Tracy. <laughs> ben Tracy, how she knocked out her critics and shows him her signature moves. Doesn't that look like it hurts? The news is back in the morning. We'll see you at 7 o'clock straight up. All right, good back to see you. Back to you, too, Frank and Maria. Good well, to see you. See you Thanks, soon. Gail. <laughs> Enjoy. Have a great show. Thank you, Gail. Uh, a Bay Area man at the top of his profession is now disrupting the old business model when it comes to real estate. Well, only on 5, Kiddo looks at a move that changes how employees are paid. Just another $7 million listing. At the mountaintop of Bay Area real estate. Just another $7 million listing, but a beautiful one. There's not a lot of room for modesty. And I just feel confident saying we're the best because it's a simply it's a better business model. Ken DeLeon's firm has been named by the Wall Street Journal as the number one real estate team in the country. Wow. When we first met Ken three years ago, he'd just been crowned the number one individual agent in the country. So people ask me how I've achieved so much success, and I'd say three things. Number one, undeniable genius. Doing it all himself, using data and market analysis to appeal to high-tech clients. Combined with some slick and savvy marketing, like this limo bus to shuttle around wealthy Asian investors, we called him the Steve Jobs of real estate. Now that whole one-man band approach seems so 2012. Ken has taken everyone in the firm, including buyers and sellers agents, off commission and pays them a salary. He now has 42 employees and runs the company like a law firm or hospital. The problem I found with being an individual agent where you're trying to do everything is that no one person can be great at every component. Uh, this, our legal department said need some legal advice? There's staff for that. If you need some flyers, there's staff for that. Help with interior design? There's even staff for that. And by hiring the people who are the best in their field and then plugging them into the role that is most viable to the client, you can elevate the level of service beyond what any individual agent could ever do. <laughs> it's working. De Leon Realty beat out thousands of other agencies last year by raking in more than half a billion dollars in transactions. So, we gotta ask. Is the Bay Area in a housing bubble? And if so, will it burst anytime soon? I still think that we have not hit the ceiling yet. I believe that the Bay Area having seven figure norms for the median home price of almost all the cities is the new normal. I just think that fundamentally this area is so in demand with such few finite supply of homes available that the demand is always going to outstrip supply. And so Deleon says there's a couple of reasons why supply of homes is so low. Number one, people aren't selling because they don't want to get hit with the high capital gains taxes. Also, aging homeowners are hanging on to their homes because they're enjoying the low property taxes because of Prop 13. Back to you. Did I hear clearly he said we haven't yeah. hit a ceiling just yet? Well, when's it going to stop? Yeah, you know, we've been uh, enjoying uh, double-digit growth over the past couple years. Uh, Deleon says look for that to slow somewhere in the neighborhood of 5 to 15% growth over the next two years. Beyond that is anybody's guess. We're live in Palo Alto, Kitto, KPIX 5. All right. Thanks, Kit. Thank you, Kit. You Let's... get a million bucks, you can buy a house. <laughs> I know. Maybe. <laughs> maybe here in here. the Bay Area. <laughs> All right, traffic time. Let's uh, kick it over to Lisa. Yeah, a million dollars will buy like a little postage stamp house out in the Silicon Valley. We're going to talk about the Livermore Valley, where we do have problems now. The closure, remember, it's now an extended closure, expected to be shut down till at least 12 noon today. Isabel Avenue, Highway 84, it is shut down at Vineyard. As we go to pictures now of this closure, all of this stemming from this morning's big rig accident involving a big rig and several other cars. As we go to these live pictures right now from Chopper 5, this is what crews have to tend with. They got to figure out a way to upright this big rig, offload all of that cargo and clear the roadway. So for the time being, Isabel, also known as Highway 84, is shut down in both directions in Livermore. You're going to want to use Valacitos instead. That closure is right at Vineyard and we've got traffic backed up 
from at least Concanon. Of course, this is a very busy roadway that Livermore drivers use to, uh, use to avoid either 580 or 680. Okay, so that's one of the hot spots. It's going to be very slow this morning for northbound 101. Heavy traffic from Capital Expressway in pockets to San Tomas Expressway in the Campbell area. So expect long delays for northbound 101. 280 through San Jose still looks okay. And we've got better news for the BART system. They've been struggling with problems all morning long. BART officials tell us they are back on time. Full service restored on all BART lines this morning. No problems for the ferries or Caltrain. But take a look at the Bay Bridge toll plaza. That's going to be very slow for you this morning. Morning. The metering lights are on, and the drive time from the Carquinas Bridge to the MacArthur Maze is now up to 29 minutes. So expect those long delays. Part of the reason it's so low, it's so slow is we had that earlier accident delaying traffic at the Carquinas Bridge. The Carquinas Bridge accident has just been cleared. As we take a live look now at the Richmond San Rafael approach, slow traffic now for that westbound direction approaching the toll plaza. You make that southbound 101 uh, curve and heading through Marin County, it's free and clear of any major delays right here you can see southbound 101 heading across the Golden Gate Bridge just a 14 minute drive time between the Richmond San Rafael span and the Golden Gate Bridge toll plaza no delays for south 101 approaching the brand new Doyle Drive that's a look at your KCBS traffic now to Roberta. Good morning, everyone. Let's go ahead and call on our live weather camera. We are looking out towards the San Jose area where 24 hours ago we were socked in with areas of low clouds, fog, and even some drizzle. But right now we have a clear slate to cross the screen and we will see temperatures today as a result of clearing out sooner, warmer than what we experienced on yesterday. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the temperatures in and around our microclimates where we have numbers stacking up pretty much in the 50s and 60s. And on this Wednesday midweek, what we can pretty much anticipate across the board is a warmer day from the South Bay all the way into our inland areas. Oh, it looks like the computer is acting up a little today. Okay, 11 mile per hour winds currently in San Ramon and in Fairfield. West winds will blow 10 to 20 miles per hour later today. Now, as you can clearly see, we do have areas of low clouds and fog stacked up next to the seashore. That is wiping away earlier today. We will anticipate numbers into the 90s today and tomorrow. These will be the warmest days of the work week. The drizzle is already drying up, and we're watching your weekend forecast for the possibility of rain. Okay, there you have it. High pressure continues to build into the Bay Area as it does so. Our air mass is warming up. Now, to the south of us, that is Hurricane Dolores. Computer models want to bring it into the Northern California area by Sunday, but another model wants to take it due west. That's why it bears watching. That's why only a chance of rain. Sun up is at 6 o'clock. We already saw it by the time the sun sets tonight at 831. Smack in between. Temperatures today in the 70s, 80s, and in the 90s. Outside number 95 degrees. Ditto on Thursday. Over the weekend, a slight cool down before that chance of precipitation on Sunday and Monday. Have a great day. All right. Thank you so much, Roberta. Lawmakers are voting on a controversial bill about cell phone towers today. AB 57 would allow the state to automatically approve cell tower applications if the local governments fail to act within a certain time frame. Opponents are concerned the wireless companies would flood in applications, making it impossible to process all those applications. And we'll be right back.
Five things to know at the 55. President Obama will make his case to the American public today for the historic nuclear deal with Iran. Yesterday, a landmark agreement was reached to curb Iran's nuclear program in exchange for sanctions relief. Jury deliberations begin today in the trial of a Colorado theater shooter, James Holmes. Three years ago this month, Holmes entered a Denver movie theater and opened fire, killing 12 people. Holmes has pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Today, Amazon and Walmart are going head to head with 24 hours of deep discounts. Amazon's Prime Day event is for its Prime customers only. Deals include a 40 inch TV for 115 bucks. Walmart is countering with its own discounts over the next 90 days. And police in Richmond are investigating multiple shootings that left one man dead, four others. Injured first happened just before five last night in front of the Monterey Pines apartments on Burke Avenue. And about an hour later, there was another shooting nearby. New details are emerging in a kidnapping case in Vallejo. The FBI says it collected drones from a storage facility after arresting Matthew Muller. He and other suspects allegedly used them to watch a neighborhood before trying before kidnapping Denise Huskins. I'm Christian Hartnett, live in Berkeley, where the city council has passed new building inspection regulations in an effort to prevent accidents like last month's deadly balcony collapse. The city council passed the new inspection laws unanimously. That means in the next six months, all balconies and weather exposed elements on properties in the city will need to be inspected. Also included in the decision is the requirement of proper ventilation to prevent dry rot. A follow up inspection will happen every three years instead of the five years that was originally on the proposal. Other regulations will still need to be decided upon, such as the use of steel reinforcement and other materials used in all balconies and weather exposed elements constructed in Berkeley. And the city council estimates about 6,000 properties. Uh, are affected by this. At this point, the city council says they don't have the resources. The city does not have the money to get this done. No solution at this point to that problem. Live in Berkeley, Christian Hartnett, KPIX 5. And an advisory now for Livermore drivers. Remember, Highway 84 Isabel Avenue will be shut down till at least 12 noon today because of this morning's big rig accident and involving uh, several other cars. It is shut down both ways at Vineyard. Use Valacitos instead. The Bay Bridge toll plaza is crowded. It's not as bad as it could be. It's still backed up, though, from the foot of the MacArthur Maze with the 29-minute drive time, leaving the Carquinez span to the MacArthur Maze in Oakland. This is a beautiful bird's eye view. The city by the bay, the city of San Francisco, where the clouds are lifting. It's going to pan out to be a warmer day. And right now, we are in the 50s and 60s. No reports of any airport delays. 70s and Pacifica, 70s Central Bay, 80s Peninsula, and warming all the way to the mid-90s away from the bay in our inland areas, 84 